Hello. Oh my God, guys. I hope you're having a wonderful Friday. I'm making some spaghetti and a little bit probably won't eat it. And I will just try my best to figure out what to fix her. She doesn't like corn dogs. She Well, she'll bite it and then that's it. Pizza. She I can name five things on my hand that she'll eat. And then I have to just try to be creative. But she has a problem with the way food looks. If it looks a certain way, <clears throat> I hope you guys are having a wonderful Friday. I am. Thank you so much to my subscribers. Thank you for your support, your love, your kind thoughts. It really makes me feel like a special woman. I do want to address some things. Some feedback that I've been getting from some of you as far as like being a distraction. My nails are being a distraction. My clothes, because I pull all them. I'm messing with my hair. The dog's making noise. And, you know, the TV is loud. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And then, um, you know, me drinking beer. You know, it's it's just me. It's just me. This is me. <laughs> it's just me. I enjoy my afternoon beer when I decide to have one. I like to play with my nails. They are a part of me. Um, I love them, especially when I get get them done. I'm really am animated with it, but I'm animated with my, my hands and body anyway because I talk with them most of the time. And I'm fidgety. I am not a journalistical person. I am not this um, orthodox or etiquette person doing a channel. I'm just being me and that's it. And I hope you guys enjoy that when I'm on here. If I'm annoying, because I can be, <laughs> the tapping, the flipping, the noise or whatever, just flip whatever device that you're using over and then you won't even have to see me wave my hand or flick my fingers or take a sip or or whatever. Anything that is annoying. <laughs> because the thing that I don't want to be to you guys is this annoying black person that's getting on your nerve. I'm just here to give you a little bit of just what I'm thinking about. And also to get a little bit of what you're thinking about. So kisses. That's my suggestion. Because I don't want to lose any of you. I love all and each and every one of you guys. And I hope that you continue to, to, to support me and be at my channel with all my quirkiness, with all my flaws, with all the, the different things that I do over here at the, um, my street is, <laughs> I was going to name it. But anyway, love you guys. Moving on. I want to do a small recap on Megan and this is why because I know that video was long and the thing that I was trying to get out of it was that why would you keep doing something that why would you go back and do the same thing that you've been doing since you've been over here from the beginning which is trash the royal family and continue to see your your per, your popularity shrink because when you get on the film and start talking about your life as a royal, you're going to start lying about it. And it's not going to be a real, real, truthful film. It's just going to be more of Megan's truth. And with that car chase, really sealed the deal for me to let me know that she is a... Um, a reoccurring liar that she lies for no reason other than to make herself out to be um, that it happened to her. I'm the one that was in duress. Everybody else, it's their fault that it happened. One of you said, <laughs> so kisses to you. She said she was going to work out. She's going to get money. I think it was, I want to say, your name starts with a C. But she was going to work out and get her workout on. And then she decided, uh, you know, I'm going to have a little vodka with a little juice. And I said, oh, and I said, you know what? Hey, it's Friday. It's take a day off, have your little cocktail. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but the point of the story was, is that she blamed me. <laughs> and I love it because we're going to call it the, the Megan Blaine syndrome. Why not? 
That's what she does. She blames everyone and everything. Everything that happens to her is someone else's fault. You hear the dog? He's outside barking. <laughs> Sorry, he's a little annoying too. <laughs> well, he's a cute annoying. He can be annoying. We all can. <laughs> and so what bothers me in my mind at this point is that you would continue down this rabbit hole of of, of destruction as far as like, okay, I'm going to continue to talk about the United Kingdom. I'm going to continue to talk about the royal family and, and, and be very negative and nasty towards them so that I can get more money from Netflix. And it sounds like to me that the money is worth more than their relationship with the royal family. And by all means necessary, they need money. So they have to do the Netflix. They have to do the book. Is Harry going to finish his chapters in his book? I don't think them attacking the royal family is a good strategy because it hasn't been working. And I don't know why Harry needs to wait and see what Andrew's thing is going to do because Andrew's situation is totally different from his. And I don't think Andrew's is going to get that much attention as Harry's would just because People want to hear, okay, what else are you saying about your family that you shouldn't be saying? But why would anyone believe you and Megan for one moment about any new stuff that you would come out and say and any old stuff? Because she's constantly lying. And if you're constantly lying to us, then how do we supposed to believe anything that you say? And so everything is in question. And so whatever film, whatever film they come out with, whatever they say about the royal family, I'm not going to believe a word of it. But it's very distasteful that they came all the way to the United States and the only thing that they could come up with was to bash the royal family and make money from that. That's the only way you guys can make money. Because since she's been over here, she's been trying to do a brand, but there's no brand. Because you can't do a brand at the same time attacking the royal family and think that that's going to all blossom together. So you, Because I know what she does. She tries to kill all these stones at once. <laughs> she got rid of her father. She got, rid of, she got rid of both fathers at the same time. Harry's father and her father got rid of Harry's family. Her family never had a chance. Then she said there was races, of course, and then the suicidal and all of that to add on top of that. So imagine getting some of that again in this new film. What is she? It, it just, that's just not a way to make money and think that people are going to like you and respect you for making money by being negative to your entire family. Imagine. Imagine. Imagine yourself royalty. Imagine. Pick one of the royals you want to be. You got to be a senior royal though. And so you're royalty and you look up and all of a sudden Megan's on TV talking about you to Oprah and the whole world. Telling you that you're racist and that you almost killed her. This happened to the royal family. It actually happened. And so imagine that being you. And so putting yourself in that and, and, and just say Catherine or William or Sir Charles just shoes on the Oprah show, Spotify, Spare, and all of that. And it continues and it continues and it continues. And at some point, are you going to say something? <clears throat> I believe William has at some point we'll need to say do a cease and a desist letter because their their brand is built on trashing the royal family that's it that's all they've been over here doing in the united states and wreaking havoc and now they're going to get ready to do it again they're setting it up because obviously they need money why else would you continue to talk about something that you wasn't even a part of before two days she was only a role for two days, and now she's doing a movie about it, a whole film. 
We heard it on the Oprah docu-series, Spotify. Now she's going to do a whole film because there's more. And then, oh, about the coordination and all that stuff, too. How she's going to continue. No, they should name it how we will continue to trash our families and make money off of it. That's the title. How our brand has become just trying to destroy our family to make money to live in Montecito. And why, Harry, do you have to make money off the expense of your family members? To make one woman happy. So, because all Harry has been doing is trying to make Megan happy. He moved over here. He is help assisting with her brand. He helps lie with her. He was on the Oprah show with her. He did the spare book. He did the therapy. He did all of that for Megan and she's still not happy. Because he's over there at a hotel room. On his anniversary after she's after he's done everything for him she he's done everything for her but he will be mistreated the most and people will be like that's what he get <laughs> what vision board has this on there where you continue to hurt people. You continue to attack those that are vulnerable. That can't fight back. But are fighting back with showing you how they are serving their country. And being. Catherine is showing her. Kate is showing her that she's the princess. That she's got it going on. That she doesn't have to say anything to let Megan know. That, she, that she's not it but at some point when does it stop or does it continue so are we saying it's okay for Harry and Meghan to continue to attack the royal family while they don't do anything does it ever stop does it stop does the trashing stop someone asked one of you I think it was River and Sam Sam you guys are so awesome this was to all of you. Thank you. Marina, all of my wonderful, wonderful subscribers. When did when when did it do it for you when you found out that Megan was just not a very nice person? And it was the same time as mine. It was around when she was in Africa talking about no one asked her if she was okay. I've never seen Megan care about anybody other than her own feelings, her own personal stuff. Every situation, it's not about the entire situation. It's about how it affect Megan and how it ended badly. How they, how, how she blames them, how it made her look bad and it was their fault that it did. That's how all her stories go. That's how the car chase is going. And so that's how this new film is going to go. Because Megan is one note. She it Come to find out, she doesn't have the talent that she needs to be able to be with the A-listers. She doesn't have their talent. She's been here five years. No one has noticed her. All those producers that she invited to her wedding, all the John, the Clooney's and the Oprah's and stuff, and they haven't got her any movie deals because, oh, she, it's her decision to go back into acting? No. <laughs> no, it's the producer's decision. Because if, they, if she had all these deals lined up, then why are we talking about a film about her life as a royal? Because there's no talent there. And so that's the only way that she can make money. And that's sad. Because she was blessed to be. Because this is what she always wanted. To be globally recognized. And she was blessed to be able to do that. And then when she gets it. She squandles it. And makes it into some type of just. It's disgusting the way she's treating it. 
as if she's been as if she's been royalty all her life and people was was she's been the Duchess of Sussex since she was born. You would think that Harry she was the royal and Harry was the actual person that was not he's not the prince. He becomes the prince after she marries him. She is almost like she grabbed his royalty and took it and said, this is how we're going to treat it. This is how we're going to roll with it. This is how we're going to work this royal stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she took it. She's been running this. She's running this show. This is Megan's show. This isn't Harry's show. This is Megan's show. And now they want us to say, oh, no, 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 no. Harry is not staying at a hotel why is she coming out debunking that so quickly and so fast if she didn't feel like it was if it wasn't true that's how she tells on out on herself that she's always in the tabloids reading and trying to figure out what we're saying about her so she can say or not say because she quickly came out and got very upset with all of us because we didn't believe her damsel in distress um call when she was almost in that near catastrophic car chase in near death. She was pissed. I'm shocked and appalled at all of you that you don't believe me. How dare you? I'm the Duchess of Sussex. Did they not know that? And I just believe Hollywood has had enough of them and they already know what Megan's about and that people that are in New York are finding out quickly. Like, oh, okay. Because have you seen her with any celebrities? Where are the celebrities that she invited to her wedding? Are they hanging out with her? Oprah is... Oprah, where are you? You didn't invite your girl to the to your little shindig thing? Is it over? Is you trying to tell us that you're blacklisting her? Listen, I'm out. This is a short video. Th this film bothers me and, and it doesn't matter who cares about what I feel I'm so but what I'm saying when it bothers me I'm talking about it a lot because that seems to be their MO that seems to be their their money making train machine and this conversation is not going to go away because if this is what they're planning on doing, I want to talk about why they continue to go down this road of attacking King Charles. And Charles, you're not going to be able to sit back and allow these two to continue to do it. It cannot continue to be done. You, you can, but it's not good because eventually you're going to have to shut them up. Because us knowing about you guys' business on this level, I feel like I'm violating it. I don't want to know that Harry was fighting with his brother for over, over Megan. I can sit here and we can go over incident after incident. Now, we can write a real story about Megan and stop playing around. The real deal story, the one that we see, the lies, the real deal, what really happened. When are they going to come out with that story? Because the fairy tale is over. With her and the little coach and her and Harry riding past and waving. And Harry looked good that day. With his little hair, his little hat and his little uniform and stuff. Harry looked real good. That was the last time he did Cause she was been jerking on him and pushing him and moving him and telling him what what he's gonna do for her. Harry didn't want to leave his home. He wasn't trying to get to California. No, she put him in a state of frame of mind that he didn't have a choice because she needed to get away from over there because the paparazzi was was chasing her, and he needed to save her. And he doesn't want every anything to happen to her like what happened to his mom. And so she's got his brain his brain conditioned to think that he has to save her from everyone. The courts, paparazzi, the guy on the street, um, his family, everyone. I'm going to say it again. She's got him thinking and believing that he has to protect her from everybody, even us. We're a threat. 
anyone that don't believe what Megan is saying, we are the enemy. Because we are supposed to believe everything that she says. And then when we don't, then that's when Harry comes in and adds his two cents. And says, yeah, she is a great person. She is wonderful. She could have changed the world. And Megan was the one that was being attacked by my family. They did um, they did treat her with little respect. This, I'm paraphrasing, but he said it in his book. That they, they um, committed racism against her. He went against everything that he believed in and helped lie for this money. Because it was all for the money. And then when he walked into the abbey at the coronation, he just looked like he was guilty from doing it. Yeah, that I would have been in the abbey like, yeah, that's the son. That's the son. His name, that's Harry. Mm -hmm. Just say they didn't know him. That's Harry. That's the one that's got that wife that did all that stuff. That said, the, and they got all that money. Tell the real story, Netflix. And why do they trust Netflix? I don't trust anybody that Megan works with because she is um, dangerous. She's scary. And I, she, it, Megan is scary to me. She is cutthroat. Because anytime you're going to force down our throat that you were in a two-hour car chase in Manhattan, it's just not going to do it. 